To show the full breadth of success from toppling Saddam, I digress by journeying back in time a few tracks for context preceding success. Twas not fully known when the mission began to prevent Saddam's fission that Khan was a schooler of Libya's ruler progressing towards bombs using fission. Soon after the launch of the mission for ending Saddam's hopes for fission, it seemed that Hussein again might remain in power despite W's mission. And when, after statues were toppled, Saddam, whose regime appeared hobbled, eluded escape, Gaddafi had faith Saddam would undo being toppled. But later we captured Hussein, which thereupon made it quite plain, although he remained alive, it was plain he'd never hold power again. And more was attained than preemption of hopes by Saddam to make fission, but strident Bush critics, with views thus constricted, ignore the full fruits of this mission. What critics ignore, I explain. On news that we'd captured Hussein, Gaddafi confessed, from fear he'd be next. From working on nukes, I'll refrain. Gaddafi then showed to the West his progress towards nukes he could test, and also agreed his program could be removed and destroyed by the West. But what would have happened, alas, if W had taken a pass on toppling Hussein? Not hard to explain if first we go back to the past. His critics' rewriting of history, accounting with one-sided entries, with cruxes excluded, can best be refuted by pairing correlative entries. This trip to the past will affix to history what critics had picked as what should be done, then forward times run to show what would now be transfixed. Including each crux then in play, yields what would have happened displays, had critics prevailed. For that I unveil, rewind, then rewrite, then replay. If critics the W had heeded by letting Saddam remain seated in power, Saddam would now have the bomb, with likewise Gaddafi proceeding. And chances are zip zero none. Iran would stop nuke work begun to counter Saddam's acquiring the bomb. Indeed, they'd blame us for his bomb. And Gore would by now have hurled claims at W which would be the same as those that Gore pushed against Daddy Bush for not having toppled Hussein. You doubt Gore would stoop to such shame? Search Rencom plus Gore on Hussein plus Persian Gulf War for rantings of Gore at Bush 41, re Hussein. Twas after the Persian Gulf War that candidate Albert A. Gore trashed Bush 41 for what left undone? Deposing Hussein in that war. Thus Gore and the left would now claim if W had toppled Hussein, the folks in Iran would not want the bomb, for which they on Bush would heap blame. He betrayed this country! To undo this alternate future, again we go back and unsuture such alternate way for history to play, and then we come back to the future. Though still we have grounds for alarm, Korea up north and Iran want nukes to make threats. Bush ended such threats in Libya and in Iraq. Moreover, what's shown above left reveals what we'd face if the left's proposals had won post-2001. T'would double the risks W's left.
Instead, what's displayed above right, though still quite a dangerous plight, makes clear bush reduced from four down to two the sources for nuclear fights. Though Bush by the left has been pilloried, in history his real valedictory as Bush the defeater of leftist appeasers will be his enabling our victory. To whom are our thanks most deserving for steadfast, courageous, unswerving fidelity to what freedom can do? Both Bush and our troops bravely serving. To you who defend us, this anthem proclaims the thanks we owe you that our freedoms remain.